Okay, so so yeah, we're gonna go through qualitative and quantitative re uh, research and how to find it. Uh, most of the time, uh, you know, when you're looking for quantitative or qualitative literature that you would, you know, uh, look through the document, analyze the research method, which of course you should also do as well. But what I'll show you tonight is 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 that the is that there are uh, you know, many ways using the library's resources and some of their tools, filters, and limiters, and things like that, that can help you locate that information more efficiently. So our agenda for tonight is uh, talk a little bit about uh, qualitative and quantitative um, uh, research design, uh, some of the search strategies that are kind of involved in it, and then we're going to spend just a few minutes um, locating literature using a couple of different databases. Uh, really, the main ones I wanted to focus on are PubMed and CINAHL. Uh, I'll also show you how to locate quantitative and qualitative literature using Search USA, of course, which is sort of our, uh, you know, search all tool that searches all of the library's resources. So just a quick rundown of what quantitative research is versus qualitative research. Quantitative research is usually exactly what it sounds like, you know, quantities, quantitative, a lot of numbers, a lot of data, tables, things like that. Um, it's usually structured data, statistical analysis, and surveys, and it's usually your more hard science type of um, research articles, whereas a uh, Qualitative research is a little bit more unstructured. Uh, unstructured, it deals a lot with, um, it, still, it still deals with data, um, but it's not collected in the same sort of uh, rigid way uh, as it is with quantitative research. Uh, usually a lot of the information that's sort of gathered through, through, uh, through the qualitative research method is um, interviews, sure, but they're usually, um, usually unstructured interviews. They rely on, uh, observations and focus groups and, and things like that. Whereas quantitative research uh, does depend uh, a lot on the interview process. It's a much more controlled and rigid um, um, uh, type of interview process. So both of them share some of those similarities, but I would say that the, uh, uh, that the latter qualitative research is a little bit more of the, uh, um, the uh, sort of um, unstructured style, but it still gives you great um, evidence though, regardless. So a little bit more about quantitative research as far as, um, as just a little bit more about its characteristics as, as I sort of quickly went through before is that it's usually, it's a quantitative research is a structured um, research instrument. It results are usually based on uh, large samples. The experiment itself is usually intended to be uh, replicated. Uh, it only gathers the most pertinent data and one of like, the major characteristics of quantitative research, as I'm sure you've probably seen, is there's a lot of, uh, a lot of numbers, a lot of charts, figures, tables, and diagrams. And overall, quantitative research really, really searches out for patterns and relationships as far as in a generalized concept. Uh, as I mentioned before, the like one of the research instruments that is pretty prominent in quantitative research uh, are, um, are controlled interviews and, and questionnaires, uh, which are, of course, um, used to collect numerical data. Most quantitative research is also of a high reliability. Qualitative research, uh, as I mentioned before, kind of avoids a structured research instrument. They sort of, they rely, as I was mentioning before, on, you know, unstructured interviews and focus groups. It's more narrative based. Uh, it's, you know, features, you know, it's, it's gap, the information is gathered uh, from one's actual experience um, more than statistical analysis. Uh, it's less generalized overall and the observations usually take place uh, on site and sometimes uh, there are um, uh, role-playing instances that are that are involved in this as well. 
So uh, as far as searching for qualitative and quantitative research, just like anything that you're trying to locate through the library, you know, some really targeted search terms can be extremely helpful. And what I, what I tried to do here is just sort of extract some, like some of the keywords that, that are usually synonymous with, um, uh, with each research design. So these terms, as I mentioned, some of these are studies that are associated with both research methods, but sometimes just adding, you know, quantitative or qualitative to your keyword search won't exactly do the job as efficiently. So adding some of these terms, some of the ones that I've sort of pulled out can actually help you find these much faster because it's searching by um, uh, an actual uh, study design instead of by just simply you know relying on qualitative and quantitative research so some study designs that are that are quantitative research in nature are going to be ones like uh, uh, correlation studies uh, data uh, distribution experiments are also big and that that means uh, uh, experimental trials, uh, um, uh, quasi-experimental trials, anything usually with an experiment in some way if added to a keyword search that you're doing uh, can uh, will provide you with uh, at least some quantitative research articles, uh, pre-tests and post-tests. And I think the biggest term when it comes to looking for quantitative research that will almost always send you to quant quantitative research uh, is randomized controlled trials, which are, you know, as quantitative research as it gets, really. Uh, qualitative research, on the other hand, is going to rely on terms like case studies, um, uh, ethnograph, focus groups, interviews, narratives, uh, you know, things like that. And like I said, you know, and um, I will do an example for you soon is that, you know, you can add some of these terms uh, to your keyword searches now um, uh, just to locate those types of studies. There are also a, a couple other ways to do it. Like I said, the, uh, the actual task of, of locating this, this type of literature is not as hard as it seems, really. But, um, but yeah, so uh, one of the other ways that's some, some might say the most efficient, which is using subject headings, filters, and limiters. So databases, uh, as far as when we're talking about qualitative literature, databases, uh, you know, index information using subject headings or controlled vocabularies. This varies from database to database. Um, you know, qualitative research may be indexed as qualitative research in some databases, while in others, it may be qualitative studies, which which you have to account for sometimes. So other subject headings and search terms that can be useful when you're looking for qualitative literature, as I mentioned, would be ones like focus groups, interviews, and de descriptive research, because that usually means um, a narrative uh, of some type. As I mentioned in Search USA, you know, you can use the advanced search and the um, uh, and the subject field to locate qualitative research. Qualitative research is, in fact, um, um, uh, it is indexed as a um, as a search uh, or as a subject term um, uh, in Search USA. And I think partly the reason why is because uh, in PubMed, which of course let me back backtrack again. You know, Search USA are sort of search all tool searches. All of the library's resources, really, except for one, and one of those, which is PubMed, indexes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, qualitative research as qualitative studies. So that's probably why that that little subject term will pop up if you were to search it that way. Uh, but again, other helpful uh, keywords to attach to to a subject search for qualitative research again might be descriptive research case studies interviews focus groups and narratives uh, you know databases also enable sets um, uh, sets of results that can be limited or filtered by a specific field so you know um, um, so i would say to determine your search conditions such as and a lot of these have examples like this like publication types, clinical queries, publication year, and then apply them accordingly. 
The quantitative research sort of works the same way uh, using the different subject headings uh, that are available, uh, particularly those in PubMed and CINAHL. Uh, you can use those to definitely help you find quantitative research a lot faster. I know for a fact in CINAHL, it's pretty, I think it's fairly simple to locate quantitative research in CINAHL um, uh, compared to to, to some of the other databases. It's partly because CINAHL, uh, it indexes quantitative research as quantitative studies, and then under the umbrella of quantitative studies, uh, then, it, then it defines um, the different types of quantitative studies, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you that soon. In PubMed, it, PubMed, it's not exactly indexed as quantitative research, but rather, you would see it as a uh, validation studies as topics, statistical distributions, uh, meta-analysis as topic, as well as investigative techniques, and, and I'll show you where some of that stuff is located. But it's not directly um, uh, indexed as uh, indexed as quantitative research. But you can you can also search the same way. I'm going to show you how to search in Search USA. Uh, you can also search it as a keyword. So uh, speaking of keywords, you know, keywords, of course, you know, use a sort of uh, a free text keywords that, that will search in titles and, and uh, in abstracts and, and the records that, that are in the database to help you identify quantitative research. So like I mentioned, like the one, the one term that a lot of people use to locate quantitative research um, is, are usually like, you know, randomized controlled trial or something, some kind of clinical trial or controlled trial. And that usually, as I mentioned, will then search the, the free text search, the keyword search. Uh, it'll search for those words uh, together in, in some instance, whether it's in the title, abstract, or keyword. Uh, so, yeah, some other keywords as far keywords and uh, that you could use when you're trying to locate quantitative literature. And I'll say it again: is quantitative. You can use survey um, validity, uh, variance, uh, correlation. Uh, of course, randomized controlled trials, clinical trials, quasi-experimental is another one that you can use, and so on. So let's go do some searching really quick. Let me pause for any questions right before I switch over. Uh, Mel, are you good? I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears really quick. Just make sure you can see the library homepage. If you give me a yes on the chat, that would be good. And all right. So in Search USA, of course, you can um, you know begin your search using the search bar here at the top. When you're doing a little, and I, I've been uh, saying this to students a lot more lately, but when you're doing more specialized searching or a little bit more in-depth searching, other than just a couple of keywords, I think the advanced search is has been really helpful for some. So I've been pointing a lot of people toward that. But before I get into searching, I want to point out the um, library guide that, that has been created for finding quantitative and qualitative research. Um, it, it could be a, an, an uh, excellent book into this presentation. Some of the information that I'm covering here is actually in, um, is actually in this um, library guide, of course, it's sort of like collected together. So, uh, so I'm gonna add this to the chat just so you can have it for later if you'd like to consume it that way. Uh, like I said, some of the same stuff I'm talking about as I actually located in this guide here. So Search USA, we'll go back. Instead of accessing again from the search bar at the very top, I'm gonna to go through the other access point, which is in our resources area. I'm actually gonna open a couple of different tabs really fast because we're gonna come back to databases shortly. But uh, let's go to the advanced search for Search USA. And in the advanced search, um, I'm just gonna click right here to advanced searches next to basic search right under the search bar. And I'm just gonna type in just a topic that I'm looking for, congestive heart failure. Now you see with the advanced search um, uh, as well when you're using Search USA that, um, that there is an um, um, autocomplete feature that pops up down at the bottom. So I'm typing in congestive heart failure and it's giving me um, you know, uh, uh, just some search options. Uh, that are based on the most searched slash the most popular searches uh, by all um, 
um, EBSCO users. And if you know about this, uh, EBSCO uh, is is used a lot. So a lot of the times these um, these little popular search combinations and search term combinations can be really helpful. But instead of going too deep into keyword searching and stuff like that, uh, as far as with congestive heart failure, what we're really getting into is um, let's do quantitative for this one. So you can see I went ahead and just typed in QU and it gave me uh, qualitative research was the first one that popped up there, which we could very well do this. It's a popular term apparently that can be used. If you wanted to, you could add the, the, uh, the quotation marks around it just to make sure that it searches those, uh, those terms together. But I would say for this particular instance, I think you'd be able to leave them as so and you would be able to find a lot of information. Now, you see also under popular terms, there is a search that is a successful search apparently that's for qualitative research, qualitative study, or qualitative methods or interview, which of course is a, uh, it's a, it's a one large search that's doing like four different searches at the same time. So what it would do if we were to activate this search with congestive heart failure is that it would do a search for congestive heart failure in context with the other searches for qualitative research, qualitative study, qualitative methods, and interviews. So it's intended to sort of cover, um, you know, not only qualitative research as a broad topic, but then qualitative as it may appear or, or, or exactly how it's indexed in its types of studies. So it's basically like just trying to find some, trying to find some type of qualitative um, uh, information out there. It's not a bad search to do for sure, but I think we'd be able to find something just by doing our quick search really quick. So congestive heart failure, failure qualitative research, and pretty quickly we go, we already are seeing some possibilities. So of course we have one right here. Uh, a lot of the times when you're looking for the, um, the research design of a, uh, uh, of an article, a lot of people miss this from time to time, and, and and it's kind of embarrassing sometimes. I've had people ask me, "Hey, is this article a qualitative or is it a quantitative study?" And even before I look at the actual article, it says it right in the title. So I would say when you're trying to identify, uh, you know, which research design that the study that you're looking at falls under, you know, make sure that you're looking at the title. At first, because sometimes the the either the research design itself is named or or the study um, uh, design is named in it. Like let's say if this wasn't a qualitative study, it could say experiences living with congestive heart failure, a randomized controlled trial. Sometimes it appears right front and center, right in the title. Uh, other places in the uh, in the items abstract that you may find out like about the research design will be in, uh, and depending on the article, not all of them have this, but this one has design as one of its uh, sections where it covers, you know, the type, the way the information was gathered. And in, in, in other articles, it usually falls under the method section, which would be right here uh, as part of the abstract. Another way to tell if it's quantitative or qualitative is the subject terms. As I mentioned before, you know, you can search by these subject terms as well. And so those are some uh, little tips. It gets a little bit more trickier with, with quantitative research because sometimes it doesn't necessarily just in the subject terms list that it's quantitative research or that it doesn't necessarily, um, you know, uh, show, show you in the title. Sometimes it does, like what type of study it actually is. So, um, so usually, uh, just just what when my suggestion when you're trying to identify uh, a research design and you're unsure is to, of course, read the text. Of course, that's always going to help you. Uh, you know, read the method section and see how the information was collected. But, but you know. Uh, be mindful that it can show up in a bunch of different places. And it may not just say quantitative. It may be randomized controlled trial or clinical trial or, or tables and charts or something. So but anyway, that this is us searching for quantitative or for, for qualitative research using SearchUSA, which you can do. But let's say we wanted to find more quantitative studies. 
Now we could type in quantitative research. I'm sure there are uh, articles that are uh, indexed using quantitative research. We even have a, 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 uh, a autocomplete version that we have had for qualitative where someone apparently is looking for uh, quantitative research or qualitative study or just quanti or, or just um, um, quantitative as far as where it'll appear anywhere, whether it's a subject term or in the title or in the abstract, which is not a bad, bad idea for searching in Search USA either. Um, we could try it just to see what's out there. It's, uh, it's not a bad possibility to do if you're really desperate looking for quantitative research. It can help out. Again, it's not sometimes going to be very apparent in Search USA that it is quantitative research by those means of the title, but you will see it pop up in other areas as well. So it does show up in the subject headings. This article was pulled from a database, a supplemental index database. I'm not actually for sure which one that might be, but in this particular database, quantitative research is indexed so that would be very helpful for us as well also in, in this particular example it does pop up in our um in the title which i don't really see as much as as usual but um yeah so you can use it that way uh if you wanted to of course you can get down to the the different studies so we have like a clinical trial if you wanted to you could add that um, or here, here's a good one right here for sort of searching a couple of different types of, of, of study designs, as I mentioned before, that are usually related to quantitative research like clinical trials, randomized controlled trials, or controlled trials. This is going to really, really give us those particular types of studies, uh, you know, right off the top. But again, it's doing a lot of different searches at the same time. So it's giving you a lot of information because it's doing three, four different searches at the same time, but you could separate this up. So you're only looking for clinical trials or randomized control trials or, or, or whatever. But that's one of the ways to do it using Search USA. Of course, you can also look, use some of the, 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 the terms that are synonymous with uh, quantitative or qualitative research as well. So if you're looking for case studies, for instance, but let's say we want to really make sure that we keep these terms together. Uh, they can kind of go all over the place. You know, we could look that up as well, or I probably should have done a uh, case study as well uh, for that one. But again, you know, you, you, you can kind of get the idea from here. Uh, another one for congestive, maybe congestive heart failure, we'll do correlation or correlation study, which is usually a, a quantitative um, study design. So yeah, there's, uh, there's lots of ways to do it using Search USA. Now let's go to one of our uh, databases and let me show you why. I know lots of people will ask, you know, if Search USA has all these capabilities and searches everything the library has, why do I have to use any of the other databases? Well, it particularly in this instance is one of the reasons why that it's very helpful to use the library's databases when you're looking for information. You know, not, not only does it give you perhaps the specific information you're looking for because it's a specialized database that, 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 um, that, um, uh, that is the, the general topic uh, of your research, but really one of the great things about academic databases in general is especially when you travel to them, is some of the, some of the features that really help you more efficiently um, locate information. So again, I'm gonna go to the advanced search because there's a couple things I wanna show you. Now in Search USA, I don't know if I was able to show this, but the thing with Search USA that really sets it apart, aside from it being a, a search engine versus a database, is that because it's just a search engine, a pure search engine only, it doesn't really give us a lot of different types of limiters and filters that we can use for the information, especially on the advanced search. Um, usually some of the databases, as far as they have these things that are, that are called, um, that are called pre-search uh, limiters and filters, and they don't really have a lot because again, it's not really a database, it's, it's a search engine that's searching lots of different databases. So when you want to search something like, let's go for CENOF, we're doing you know, um, nursing research, 
I'm going to type in congestive heart failure here. Of course, it has the, the, the same autocomplete uh, feature as well if you need some advice on searches that you're doing. But as I scroll down, you'll notice that there are substantially more limiters and filters that you can use. Particularly, there is one as you keep scrolling down in CINAHL for randomized controlled trials, which as we've learned are basically like, you know, if it's a randomized controlled trial, there's a pretty good, you know, pretty good indicator um, that it's a quantitative research article. But you, but, but you also want to fan out as well. You don't necessarily just want randomized controlled trials because randomized controlled trials, sure, they're quantitative research, but it's a, it's a study, it's, it's a study uh, design. And there are lots of quantitative study uh, designs out there um, that you can take advantage of. So if you wanted to limit your search, the our congestive heart failure, to randomized controlled trials only, you can activate this, um, this limiter, that's a pre-search limiter, so that when we do hit enter and search, it's only gonna search for randomized control or congestive heart failure, randomized controlled trials only. There's another uh, filter or, uh, or um, uh, limiter that's also down here, that's publication type, which gives you the different types of publications that are collected in a database like CINAHL. So this is going to be abstracts, um, anecdotal information, uh, bibliography, biographies, as you can see, we can kind of go through here. There's one for case study, which of course a case study is usually synonymous with, with qualitative research. So it's definitely one we're not going to uh, we're not going to check. But one I am going to check as far as like make sure that we cast our net for congestive heart failure for a lot of quantitative research is I'm going to go to a clinical trial. That's one of the ones I'm going to zero in on. And in publication type, uh, if it make it when you select it, it looks like you're only allowed to select one. But actually, if you uh, depending on what kind of computer you have, I have a um, I have a Windows computer, so I can hit the control button. I believe if you're a, a Mac user, it's the command button. But if you hold it down while you're in the publications list. You can actually click on a couple of different types of studies at the same time. And a couple of the ones that I would suggest you utilize would be equations and formulas, because it is, you know, quantitative research. Um, 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 it's a numerical, um, you know, it's a numerical study design. So it's definite. So anything that you're going to be searching for, you want, for most likely would want for it possibly to be indexed or a publication type is featuring equations and formulas. Uh, another one would be statistics, which is down here somewhere. Of course, we also, there's actually a, another publication type uh, filter for randomized controlled trial that's actually in here. Uh, we don't really need to collect that one since we already have it um, activated above, but we can do, statistics that's a good one and tables and charts and theoretically with all of this together we should be able to search and find potentially some some good literature basically so looks like we uh, we have some stuff to go through is especially so of course we have uh, you know a randomized controlled trial that's one of the things that we were filtering for initially but you'll see in the the type of article it is it does talk about it has tables, randomized control trials, and, and numbers. And this is just using the limiters and filters. Now for qualitative research, it kind of works the exact same way. Um, you would just kind of go through and select studies that are qualitative research in, in nature. I will tell you with a, a database like CINAHL, which is a, um, you know, which is a nursing, um, um, and an allied health uh, database, I would say, generally speaking, it's going to be probably more of the information that is collected is going to be uh, scientific information, experimental inf um, uh, information, but there's, there's most definitely some, some qualitative research that will also pop up here as well. And again, you can use the pre-search uh, limiters and filters in order to do that, and you can also use some of the keywords that we've talked about uh, to identify that type of research uh, therein. Sometimes you'll also notice in the subject headings, uh, the subject area in CINAHL, it will actually point out the different types of studies that there are from time to time. But that would have to be if the study was um, indexed in the subject 
headings, which are down here, which we talked about earlier. Um, sometimes the those particular studies or design is indexed in the subjects, but in CINAHL, the majority of the time, it's going to be indexed as, quali as quantitative studies, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, but we'll take a look at that real quick. So, of course, using keyword searches and limiters and filters can help you locate this information. The last bit with CINAHL that I'll show you is its CINAHL subject headings. So, CINAHL has their, their, their own subject headings. They're somewhat based off of PubMed's um, uh, mesh headings, which, of course, which we'll look at shortly. Uh, PubMed's mesh headings, uh, well, mesh stands for um, medical subject headings. And so, like I said, they're they're based off of MeSH, but CINAHL has its own uh, controlled vocabulary. Like, for instance, uh, if I were to do this particular search for quantitative studies, which is um, how it's indexed here in MeSH, that's not going to be the same um, uh, uh, controlled vocabulary term uh, that I would use, say, for uh, what. Um, uh, when I go to PubMed. So they're kind of, they're looking for, they're, they collect a lot of similar types of information, but they kind of speak two different languages. The cool thing about searching for quantitative studies or, or quantitative research in CINAHL is that when you find the subject heading for, for quantitative studies, it then breaks down the different types of studies that that make up quantitative research. Of course, these are not generally all of them. Uh, some of them are sort of variations, but it gives you the important ones uh, in the in this little um, uh, subject tree, basically. So it shows you too, like if you wanted to, you could search by these in as search terms, like as using them as a free text keyword term in CINAHL, but you can also attach them to, uh, to a search as well. So if we wanted to add a couple of different terms to, to this, we very well could do that. Let me go back out for a second. Um, first, I wanna, before I get into, actually I wanna do the congestive heart failure search first as a heading, and then uh, we'll add this to our search like so, then we'll browse additional terms and what we're going to add for our terms now is quantitative studies. And this is another way to, to locate quant, uh, quantitative studies. This would be the way that if you really, if you're looking for the subject, the subject heading for quantitative studies, again, sometimes quantitative studies are, um, um, are they're indexed as subject headings and other times they're not. So you kind of have to experiment a little bit with it. You can, you can use this method, the subject searching to, to locate quantitative studies, but it may not give you the same results. It may actually um, you know, weaken your search. So you're gonna wanna kind of think of the different types of quantitative studies just to make sure that you're seeing the big picture. So I can add this to my search if I wanted to as a, as a broad search, or if I uncheck it, I can add different types of quantitative studies along, along, uh, along alongside of this. And we saw this a few minutes before with this, um, this sort of tree view of the different types of studies that you could search alongside. So I'm gonna add um, here, experimental studies, just as an example. Oh, as you can also see, it does have qualitative studies. So if you wanted to search them both at the same time, you theoretically could do that. If I'm not mistaken, with qualitative studies, if you were to do the uh, hit on the plus sign there to see the other um, uh, the other types of studies that are located under that um, that major heading, you'll see some of the the different types of study terms that uh, that are indexed in CINAHL that you can use as well. So I'll try not to get too far in the weeds here, but um, these, this is a, a definite, um, definite great way to search, for sure. Uh, it does take a little trial and error uh, in, different, in different places. I think it's better, instead of searching by quantitative studies, again, to search by a specific study. Uh, that tends to usually um, you know, warrant you a much, a much better search overall. So yeah. Uh, so then pretty much after that, again, kind of harking back to what you're looking for in Search USA, 
is that if it doesn't necessarily spell out the type of study it is in the title or in the 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 record or in the abstract or something you know look at the publication type that's indexed in the record of course it tells us it's a randomized controlled trial but then if we look into the minor subjects that are that are that are assigned to this article it gives us a lot more information as to what type of study it is so randomized controlled tri trial or quasi experimental studies and it also has paired t-tests and post-tests as well. And then, of course, if we were to really, you know, read through the abstract or open up the article and read through it, particularly in the design or the method section, then you'd be able to determine uh, what type of study it is exactly. So, really quickly, PubMed again has a lot of the same, a lot of the same bells and whistles. Uh, the cool thing with PubMed, as opposed to some of the, uh, as opposed to maybe CINAHL, is that sure it has those particular filters that you can activate or the limiters maybe your search or excuse me it has the the, the pre-search limiters that you can add to your search but the cool thing with the uh, PubMed is that you plug in your term gives you you know the um, it, it gives you the hits um, that you get from your sort of general search term but then they have uh, within the results screen they have um, article types which the up like in CINAHL they don't actually have that when you are on the results page all CINAHL has is their um, is they have source type which is um, which is not publication type source type is going to be whether it's academic information uh, from, from publishing an academic journal or dissertation or magazine it has our subject headings and sometimes the subject headings will have the type of study that it is but it doesn't really have anything else to indicate or to help you in, on the results page you know filter out the information you don't want well PubMeds does PubMeds under article type gives you uh, you know the different types of publications that are out there that you can see on the results page and you don't have to be an advanced search or anything you can just filter it you know sort of willy-nilly so if you already kind of understand like the different quantitative research types it makes this a lot easier it makes this whole aspect easier so you could go through and really select the ones that are quantitative research in nature which a couple of the ones that are already here clinical study uh, clinical trial, randomized controlled trial, controlled trial, uh, data set is going to be one of them that's usually associated with, with quantitative research. And uh, I'll go down to additional filters here, which gives you the, the larger list of the different studies. So, of course, we're going to want clinical. Um, we don't really need to worry about a lot of these other than, okay, we got clinical trial. We have different types of clinical trials. Uh, that are there. I think we're we're good. Uh, we have a controlled clinical trial that's been activated. Data set that's been activated. Um, let's look for any other um, any other thing that pops up that may help us indicate whether it's uh, you know quantitative information uh, or so on. And right now, those are probably the best ones. I guess we'll close out and go to randomized control trial. And it'll, and then you activate that particular filter, and then it filters out everything uh, that is not uh, a clinical study or or a clinical trial study or randomized controlled trial or a data set. So that's awesome. That's one of my that's one of my that's one of my go tos if I'm looking for uh, quantitative or qualitative information. For qualitative, it's exactly the same thing, really, but it's even easier than if you're, uh, you know, maybe in CINAHL. I think you may, may have seen it as I was scrolling through the different um, article types, but let's uh, deactivate a couple of these here, um, some of the ones that we had, and we can kind of go through and see what would be qualitative in nature, like a uh, um, uh, like an autobiography or a biography or an observational study. It, I guess it would depend on the type of observations that are being done, but of course, when you're reading the article, you can usually determine those things. Uh, personal narrative that's going to pop up right there as well that's also going to be you know something that would indicate that it's qualitative research and uh, yeah so that's sort of how to do it I mean there uh, there are other databases that provide you with different different types of um, you know limiters and filters and different tools to identify 
uh, quantitative and qualitative information. Uh, to sort of sum up everything for tonight, what I would say is that honestly, the best way to figure out a, a research design is by you know, reading the entire article, particularly those sections I pointed out, design section, um, uh, the methods section, the results section, to see how the information was tallied together and, and, uh, and, uh, and collected for the article. Um, but these tools make it so much more efficient to look for these types of articles. It may not find everything uh, because usually if it's not indexed properly for whatever reason, it may make it difficult to find if you were looking for as many quantitative, qualitative or quantitative articles on a particular topic. My advice would be like if you're using CINAHL, use the major subject heading, but then also use the different studies as well, the different publication types to make sure that you get all of those, that, all of that research. So I am going to stop talking. I'm sure you're very happy to hear that now. I'm going to stop sharing and go back to my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, if you don't have any questions, that's perfectly okay as well. Uh, my name is Ryan Gaylor, and I did this session tonight. Um, my contact information, if you have any more questions about quantitative research, is right there. It's rgaylor at usa.edu. Uh, if you have any general uh, questions, either it's about quantitative or qualitative research, or just general questions about the library, feel free to email us at library at library at usa.edu or of course you can chat with us online with our virtual chat. Um, I have a survey that I put in the chat earlier but I'm going to post it down here at the bottom to make sure that uh, you uh, you can take it for me if you have the opportunity to that is that that's totally up to you if you want to give us a little bit of feedback about our session. So uh, Melody asked a quick question. I said, she's asked, is this, this was very helpful. You're welcome. I'm glad it was very helpful. Will this recording be available to review? Yes, it will be. It's going to be housed in the archived uh, webinar section uh, of, the library's, of the library's website. Um, I can show you where that is and where it would most likely show up. Um, it might, may, take a couple of, may take a couple of days for it to appear there, but it will be there. Um, Again, this finding quantitative and qualitative research guide is it will kind of is the the text part of some of this. So you would definitely be able to use this uh, as well. But I'm probably going to post the video uh, for this under. Well, I think I'm going to make a new tab in our finding quantitative and qualitative research and add it there for this particular webinar, as this is actually the first time that I've ever done this webinar, so I'm really happy that, that you came tonight, Melody, thank you. Um, other places where it, would, it will probably end up is in the events, the archived events over here. Um, not sure, probably under advanced searching is where, it, is where it would probably show up, but otherwise it will be in that finding quantitative and qualitative research. So any other questions or anything like that, don't forget about the chat, that's, or don't forget about the survey that's in the chat. If you have opportunity to take it, I really appreciate it. And that's it. Have a wonderful night. And if you have any questions, let me know, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.